See, with the help of a couple of slides, I am going to explain about organ of Bojanus. Organ of Bojanus refers to excretory organ in mollusk, which is found in the form of a kidney or paired kidney and also known as renal organ. Some people call such structures as nephridia because in invertebrates, we give the term nephridia for excretory structures. And we can see that such structures are in the form of chambers like anterior, posterior chamber or upper and lower chamber. So according to their position, they are named. See, in case of mollusk, we find that mollusks are classified into several classes. And here in this explanation, I'm mainly explaining the organ of Bojanus of a snail, which belongs to class Gastropoda, and other one will be of uh, will be the case of a bivalve animal like Lamellidens. So, in this diagram, you can see that these two prominent structures I'm showing with the help of this indicator. This lower one is one chamber, and this upper one, this. A left side structure upper one is another chamber of kidney so these two structures make the kidney a renal organ in case of a snail for example i have taken here the case of pyloglobosa which is one of the commonly occurring representative of mollusca uh, in uh, india so this structure which is in the lower side is anterior chamber of the kidney okay this one is anterior chamber and the upper one larger structure is posterior renal chamber now in the anterior renal chamber you see on the upper side there are so many striations these striations are situated on either side of a sinus sinus means a blood space where larger amount of blood could be retained. This is afferent renal sinus. So on its either side, striations are shown. These striations are actually in the form of lamellae or leaf-like structures, which hang downward. Likewise, in the lower side, there will be efferent renal sinus. And on either side of such efferent renal sinus, so many similar lamellae or leaf-like structures will be present in it. So anterior renal chamber it is smaller, it is reddish in color and internally it possesses a number of segments or internal folds which are referred as lamellae. Lamellae are the sites where secretion of excretory material would be taking place. The other structure which is comparatively larger one and it is almost triangular. Its basal portion is much broad. The upper portion is pointed. It is a hook-like structure. It is brownish in color. Internally, it is also supplied with blood vessels like efferent renal vein and afferent renal vein. This one is afferent renal vein. So afferent renal vein will bring blood which will be rich in nitrogenous waste. The other one which contains blood free from nitrogenous waste will be efferent renal vein. So through these two renal uh, veins, the posterior renal chamber is, uh, is associated, means the blood supply is mainly made by these two blood vessels. What we find uh, that these structures are closely associated to the other visceral organs like a part of elementary canal, say here, in the right side, you can see the coiling. This one is the intestinal coiling. And on the lower portion, the pericardium is there. Pericardium means the covering which surrounds the heart. You can see the heart chamber like auricle is there, ventricle is there. So we find that uh, the renal chambers are connected with each other and they are also connected with the pericardium. This we can understand in this simple diagram. I have made a line diagram to show the position of kidneys and their association with other, uh, with other organs. Like this one is anterior renal chamber, okay? This is anterior renal chamber. As I said, in the middle portion, you can see the afferent renal sinus here. 
and these are lamellae present on it. Now this anterior renal chamber is opening into mantle cavity through renal aperture. So this renal aperture opens in the branchial, branchial chamber of the mantle cavity so that the excretory materials could be released outside. Actually, in snails, which are aquatic in nature, the excretory material is released in that area from where water goes outside. So through exhalant uh, siphon, or you can say through uh, external uh, branchial opening, the water will be going outside. And along with that outgoing water, the renal content will also be released outside. So this anterior renal chamber internally, as I said, is having so many uh, lamellae, such lamellae help in excretion process. And it also it sub gets supply of blood through afferent uh, renal sinus. There will be another sinus, efferent renal sinus. Likewise, the posterior renal chamber that has blood supply. And we find that anterior and posterior chambers are connected with an aperture. So these two chambers are also connected. It means contents may flow from posterior renal chamber to anterior renal chamber and from there it is released outside. And this posterior renal chamber is also connected with pericardium. This is another important point to remember that here is an aperture. I have shown with the help of a small aperture here that there is connection between posterior renal chamber and pericardium. Pericardium is filled with silomic fluid and that fluid can enter into posterior renal chamber so that waste materials retained in it or present in it could be filtered out. Posterior renal chamber that also possesses a leaf-like structures called as lamellae which help in excretory process. So structurally, you can have idea that how these two chambers of renal organ or kidney are associated and how they are connected with pericardium. Okay. We know that the silomic fluid contains waste materials because waste materials, nitrogenous wastes, uh, which is in the form of ammonia or uric acid, could be put into, could be actually secreted into pericardium. And from there, it gets filtered out through uh, the posterior renal chamber as well as anterior renal chamber. Majority of snails, which are aquatic in nature, they are ammonotelic. They mainly excrete ammonia. They will also be excreting out some amount of uric acid or urea, but major excretory material is ammonia. So that gets separated through these two chambers. And uh, if the animal is amphibious in nature, like pyloglobosa is amphibious in nature, so it is capable to excrete ammonia at one point of time when it is aquatic in nature. But when it becomes uh, terrestrial, means when it uh, leads terrestrial mode of life, at that time it has to retain water. So it becomes uricotelic, means uric acid becomes the major excretory material. Now another Kaber's organ or kidney we can observe in case of lamellidens, that is a bivalve animal. Unio is another representative of this class bivalvia or pelicipoda. In this diagram, three structures are mainly shown. On the upper side, you see this one is pericardium in which the heart is located. You can see the position of auricle. This one is right auricle. On its other side, left auricle will be there. And on the upper side, you can see the presence of ventricle. Okay. And here, the portion of intestine is also there. Surprisingly, in case of Lamellidens, you find that intestine that pierces into the pericardium and then it comes out from the other end. This is posterior side of the animal because we are seeing the position of posterior adductor muscles. So just at the lower portion of this pericardium, you can see the position of kidney. This much area is kidney. See, I am trying to show only that area which is actually one kidney. In case of lamellidens or bivalve animals, you will find the presence of paired kidney, means two kidneys are there, right and left kidneys are there. So one kidney is shown in this diagram and 
you can have better idea about this structure if I show you the diagrammatic position of kidneys. As I said, it is a paired structure. So here you can see this one is a right kidney and this is left kidney. Two kidneys are there. They are located on either side of the pericardium. So just below the pericardium, these two uh, kidneys are located. Now, if you observe a single one, a single kidney, it is U-shaped. Okay, this one is U-shaped structure. And the posterior portion, because here on this posterior side, the posterior adductor muscle is located. The posterior side is a looped structure. And the lower portion of it, the lower chamber, see here, it is LC means lower chamber. It is totally closed type. And this is main functional area, means here the waste material will be separated. The upper portion that acts as urinary bladder, the contents, urinary contents or excretory contents are retained in it and will be released outside through this aperture, which is renal aperture. And this renal aperture opens into suprabranchial chamber. Actually, there are four suprabranchial chambers situated just above each gill lamina. In case of lamellar dense, we find that there are four gill lamina, two outer and two inner gill lamina are there. So the renal openings are present in inner gill lamina. Okay. And uh, as I said, the uh, other one means other kidney, like right kidney here in this case, it will also have its lower limb or lower chamber. This one is upper chamber, which acts as urinary bladder, where excretory contents are retained for some time and then released into supra uh, branchial chamber, particularly in the inner chamber. So, uh, uh, once again, if I saw the previous diagram here, in this diagram, you can understand that this is lower chamber of the kidney. It is main functional portion and the excretory content are then conveyed to the upper chamber. From there, they are released outside. So this is renal aperture. And once again, I want to repeat that in case of lamellar dense, this is structure is paired and it also shows its connection with the pericardium. See here, this is pericardium. So the lower limb, this lower portion is connected with the pericardium. There is an aperture between the two. This is referred as renopericardial aperture. That is through this aperture, the silomic fluid present in the pericardium could be brought into the lower chamber where the excretory materials will be released out or will be separated. And then water along with, along with the, the excretory material will be conveyed to the ureter or to the urinary bladder, then to the ureter. Okay. And we can also understand that this kidney is well supplied with blood. So from blood also, the urinary means the excretory contents are secreted out or eliminated out. And also the excretory material which gets accumulated in the silomic fluid like pericardial fluid that gets filtered through the lower chamber. So uh, here, uh, as I said, that these are two structures. One more thing I would like to add that lower as well as upper, both chambers are also connected with the help of an aperture. Okay, so there is a common aperture that connects the upper and lower chamber. In both the kidneys, this happens. And uh, as I said, the uh, mainly lower chamber, see, lower chamber in both the cases will be mainly supplied with the uh, with the blood. So one more thing I should have added that instead of this end being closed, it should have connection with the pericardium. So unfortunately, I could not show that aspect. Otherwise, uh, there should have been an aperture in the lower chamber, which would have been connected with the pericardium. Likewise, in this case also, this particular chamber should have been connected with the pericardium because pericardial fluid that is also brought in the uh, lower chamber for filtration purpose. So this is all about uh, the organ of Bojanus in uh, case of mollusk. But there are other mollusks also 
where the kidneys have been given such name arcana bojanus it is only because bojanus was the person who for the first time dissected out so many molars and explained about the position of uh, their kidneys their excretory organs he mainly uh, gave explanations that how such structures uh, look and uh, in what way they are useful to the animal 